The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Lavon died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently you were sent to free the broken hearted you were sent to give sight to the blind you desire to Lay your hands gently, lay your hands. Lord, we come to you through one another. Lord, we come to you in your need. Lord, we come to you seeking Lay your hands gently, lay your hands. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently, lay your hands. Lay your hands gently.
baptism, Lavon received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Levon, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot, uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have discovered the task which God has appointed for us to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the time list into our hearts without us ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to be well during life. The word of the Lord. shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me, in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no, no longer be slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as a living father sent me and I have life because of the father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Be 
On behalf of Father Matthew, myself, the entire Divine Mercy Faith community, we offer to you, Brenda, Brian, and Steve, and Shane, your spouses, all of Vaughn's grand and great-grandchildren, and all of their family and friends, our deepest sympathies at this time. I was told that LaVon loved to play games, and when doing so, she would often say, whose rules are we playing by today? Surely, this was said with a smile that expressed her fun-loving personality. And I was told she also was a lady who always had an opinion and was quick to give it. I'm sure that you could all say amen to that. LaVon, she learned to try new things. She knew how to make her dreams come true. In her lifetime, she shared much love, her faith, and taught many lessons concerning life. And there are so many timeless memories that you will hold in your hearts forever. As we think of LaVon's character, the accomplishments of her lifetime, and the footprints she leaves in each of your hearts, we do so with a thankfulness to God for the gift of her life and the impact she had, not just on you, but on so many other different people that she met over the years. Let's take a few minutes today to consider a few of the ways she left such an impression and compare her actions to someone else we know. Jesus, the Son of God who came down from heaven, was like us in every way but sin. Like us, along with the good of life, he also had his share of trials and tribulations here on this earth. Yet, in these times, he always kept his focus on that which God had sent him to do, to free us from our sin so we too might live in newness of life. On his time on earth, as Jesus taught us, as he showed us the way to our salvation, he was tempted, challenged, ridiculed, and betrayed. Yet through it all, even as he carried his own cross to Calvary, he always kept us in mind on his journey to fulfill God's will. And by the way, his success in doing so is exactly what we are celebrating today at this Mass. Jesus found his strength and was able to persevere carrying his cross by staying connected to the Father. We hear in Scripture how he did this by going away, off, and praying by himself. Levon, as well, mixed in with the good of life, had her share of trials and tribulations. And in these times, she always kept her focus on her responsibility of being a mother to her family. She was able to keep her family as a focal point and persevere in these times by holding tight to her faith and finding strength by staying close to God just as Jesus did. Her prayer life and her regular churchgoer sure helped her do this. Now, as Jesus walked this earth, he earned the reputation of being a very caring person with special love for the sick and suffering in life. And it wasn't unusual for him to go the extra steps to meet the needs of others, wanting to heal them and draw them closer to the love of the Father. As the news of his healings and all of his signs and wonders spread, his reputation, reputation preceded him, and he did acquire a large following, us included. In life, Levon also had a love for taking care of people, with a special passion for the aging and their needs. This was obvious through her helping the elderly to be comfortable in their homes. You mentioned that she acquired a list of people who were wanting her to care for them. So she must have been very good at it. And we could say that her reputation preceded her as well. LaVon's concern for others along with her willingness to help also showed how she would show up at the hospital and volunteer her time to greet and assist people at the front desk, helping to answer questions, giving directions, and most likely mixing in a bit of socializing as well. And what we know of Jesus, from being brought into the world and being placed in a feed box for our crib, and all the way through his resurrection ascension into heaven, 
points to the fact that he was content to keep things simple and be humble as he followed the path set in front of him. Throughout his life, we can imagine that Jesus wanted to learn more fully the importance of what it was he was to accomplish rather than to use his status as the Son of God to attain anything that he might want to, have wanted to have. And this would explain why Jesus, while he was reconciling us to the Father, we always heard of him giving himself away rather than him accumulating things. You said that Levon really didn't need a lot either, and she never really dwelled on material things. So we can say, like, like Jesus, she also humbly embraced the simple life. Also like Jesus, Levon was able to show us that our faith in God will help us through life's struggles. Like Jesus, showed us the way to avoid the weight of depth of our sin in our lives. Levon showed the importance of saving and avoiding financial debt in life. She had a lot in common with Jesus. Now, I don't know if Jesus went as far when he was living at home as washing windows, even if they weren't dirty, or polishing cabinets, or organizing the silverware drawer, but we can say he had a cleaning thing like Levon did, just he wanted to clean our souls. And what it comes down to is that Levon, in her own way, did her best to model the self-giving love of Jesus in her ordinary life. Her efforts in doing so were a result of her faith and belief in God and her belief in the message that we heard in the gospel, the gospel she herself picked out for her funeral mass. A reading where we heard Jesus' own words telling us that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. Obviously, speaking of the Holy Eucharist, where we receive his very real presence, his body and blood. Levon's reception of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist nourished and strengthened her faith journey, not by magic, but by playing by God's rules, by being transformed, by becoming what she ate, by, by, by becoming the living bread that came down from heaven. And this is exactly why Jesus gave us the sacrament of his body and blood, so that we ourselves in our own turn will be transformed as well. So we can have a closer identity with him that will lead us to a deeper and closer commitment with each other. We are called, each of us, to become the body of Christ so we too can have parallels between our lives and his, just like Levon did. Levon did believe the words of Jesus that his flesh is the life of the world and that whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life and will be raised on the last day. Today, together, we pray that Levon will be rewarded for her faithfulness and that our God of love will pur purify her, complete her transformation, and welcome her into her heavenly home. And until that day, when we meet again, and we too enter into God's eternal embrace, may Levon rest in peace. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. For Levon, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may be welcomed at the table of God's eternal banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we who are assembled in faith and confidence to pray for Levon may be strengthened by our hope in the promises of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many of our friends and members of Levon's family have gone before us and await the kingdom. May they have an eternal home in God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nurses and our caregivers, may God continue to bless them with compassion and attentiveness towards others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That inspired by Levon, we may live our faith and share God's love and forgiveness in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Levon, may God bring you strength and may his love and mercy give you hope in the years to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as the altar is prepared to get brought forward. Our preparation hymn is number 676 in your hymnal, Only a Shadow, number 676. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Lavan, we beseech your mercy, that she who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Levon, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As Catholics who are prepared to come forward for receiving Holy Communion, I also extend an invitation to all others to uh, come forward if you wish to receive a blessing, just do so by uh, a sign of placing your arms across your chest. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our communion hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. of Jesus say, come upon to me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and drink. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Levon may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder to all gathered here that following the funeral mass and the burial, you're all welcome to join us for a luncheon uh, right next door. Trusting in God, we have taken this time to pray together for Levon. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in our parting from this place and in this time, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Levon again and enjoy her friendship. And although we disperse in sorrow now, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Number 555. take you home to the new Jerusalem. There is one thing I ask of God, for this I long, for this I hope, to dwell in the house of God every day of my life. be your guide. May they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. When I cry out, hear my voice, have mercy, Lord, and answer me. Do not cast me away in anger. For you are my help. May the angels be your guide. May they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. I shall see God's goodness forever dwell with the living, hope in God and take heart, place your trust in the Lord. May the angels be your guide, may they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Lavon and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the for the blessings which you bestowed upon Levon in this life, 
They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.